These are devotions for people at a social distance. This morning in my devotions, I was reading in the book of Daniel, chapter 2, and it begins with this episode that, I don't know, just for some reason made me think of, of the kind of situations we are dealing with. Just just read this chapter, uh, chapter 2 in Daniel, but it starts out with King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, having a dream. It says he dreamed such dreams that his spirit was troubled and his sleep left him. And so he commands all his magicians and enchanters and sorcerers uh, to come and tell him his dreams. So they come and they say, King, tell us what you dreamed and we'll tell us what it tell you what it means. Well, Nebuchadnezzar says, no, I'm not going to tell you. You tell me what I dreamed. And this is kind of odd, right? This is, yes, I get that in the ancient world, even today, you know, a lot of people put a lot of stock in the interpretation of dreams, but it is really quite unusual for the dreamer to say, well, no, you've got to tell me what I dream. <laughs> um, and what I think has actually happened or what is being described, I think, is this. Nebuchadnezzar, yeah, maybe he had a bad dream. He woke up with this, this sense of impending doom that all was not right, that there was big trouble in the kingdom, which in, indeed there was. King, the kingdom of Babylon was, was going to fall before very long. Um, but in a sense, he didn't remember what he dreamed. He just remembered how it felt. He felt as he felt the menace. He felt the worry. He felt the fear. And so what does he do? He calls in his experts. And he says, you tell me not only what to do about this problem, you tell me what the problem is. And if you don't, it goes on, if you don't, Nebuchadnezzar tells them, I'm going to kill you all. In other words, you get all the blame. You, not me, you get all the blame. And I don't know, it just sort of reminds me of what seems to happen so often in our world, especially right now, as, as our leaders are dealing with so many disasters and, you know, so many things that are going wrong and this sort of ongoing sense of, oh man, this is bad. We're heading to bad things and we're not even sure exactly what we're heading to, but, and, and much less what to do about it. You know, this, this seems to happen. And what do we do? Oh, we go and we find someone else to blame because it can't be my fault, right? It can't be my fault. It's got, we got to find someone else to blame. And if the experts get it wrong, well, we are going to punish them because, you don't want to punish us, right? So this is what our leaders do. They try to scapegoat their experts. They try to blame their experts for the decisions they often make for political reasons. And we're getting tired of it, right? We are getting tired of it. And yes, we are dealing with some really, really difficult, bad situations. And the, the sense of impending doom is real. And I get that, what our political leaders are dealing with. But honestly, uh, dealing in blame and scapegoating helps nothing. It doesn't help society to say, well, these are the ones to blame, or these are the ones we're blaming for our present policies. Let's just own what we do, do our best, and let's not spend our time in blame, but let's spend our time in doing what we can to support and help each other. I don't know, that's kind of where I am today. Lord, our God, we know that our political leaders are dealing with really unmanageable situations. And, and, and there's no way to get through this without some real damage and, and maybe despair. But let's not waste our energy in blame. Let us pull together. Let us do what is right. And um, I pray you would bless those who are trying to do the right things, including uh, maybe especially some healthcare experts who have not been particularly respected throughout this whole process. Amen.